Well, hello folks and welcome to Testimony Tuesday. Tonight we have Joyce Potter and uh, ask Joyce a few questions uh, about her life and how she came to faith and what Jesus means to her. And uh, uh, it's really a real blessing to uh, uh, have had that conversation with Joyce. And uh, um, we're looking for other volunteers, uh, maybe some conscripts, just to uh, share the testimony. Everybody who is a believer in Jesus has a testimony and uh, uh, we want to hear it uh, short or longer. It doesn't really matter. So be blessed uh, tonight with uh, uh, what uh, Joyce shares. Great to have you with us, Joyce, and uh, you're going to share us a little bit about your life and uh, testimony. So I'm going to begin just by asking, uh, where were you brought up? I was born in Glasgow and I was brought up in Glasgow. Yeah. Which, part, which part of Glasgow? Well, I, um, when I was tiny, I lived... Excuse me, I lived in um, uh, Craigton, I think it was called. And then I moved to Garngad. And then from there we moved to Rochese. And yeah, and then I got married from Rochese. So. And who influenced your life as a child? Uh, probably my daddy. Yeah, probably. My mum too, but my daddy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my daddy bought me my first Bible when I was seven. I can't remember mm. what um, what prompted me to ask for a Bible, but I remember saying, Daddy, can you buy me a Bible? Yeah, pet, I'll buy you a Bible. And he came in and I've still got it. Yeah, I did read that a lot and it fell to bits, but I've still got it. And uh, how did you become a Christian? Were, were the family used to going to church or was um, it something... Yeah, we were sent to Sunday school. Um, Audrey and I, my sister and I, were sent to Sunday school at um, uh, Gangad Church of Scotland, I think it was. Can't ever remember having any input about Jesus, but there must have been something there. And um, and then when we moved uh, to Rochese, uh, I... My, my sister always said I was a holy wee girl. I, I don't know why she called me that, but anyway, um, I went down to the church and I got involved in the the youth group um, and and just enjoyed it, you know. And then um, somebody said to me that they were going to be starting a Christian endeavour. Now, it was one of the elders in the Church of Scotland that I went to that started it, a Mr. Scott and his wife, Margaret, and Margaret's brother and his wife, the, the four of them ran it. And um, they, well, obviously, Christian Endeavour, I mean, it's all about Jesus. And um, I gave my life to the Lord there. And I remember... Yeah, going back and uh, saying to my mummy and daddy, I got saved. I'd, I heard, I remember my mummy shouting, oh, John, she's just got saved. And and my mother says to me, you'll never be the same again. I said, I don't want to be the same again. Not that I was into it and bad, but I just knew that there was something new there, you know. So did that uh, continue or did... Uh... Yes, that that continued. Um, really, although I'm saying I, I got saved there, um, I didn't really um, understand what being saved was until at 15 I went to the Church of the Nazarene and um, that was a girl I met on the bus and uh, I knew of her, she was a few years older than I was. And uh, I got on the bus from work. I used to work in, in the centre of Glasgow and we had to get the bus out to Rochese. And I got on the bus after work and it was packed, you know, it was always packed. And there was one seat, but nobody was sitting in it. And it was beside a girl who was sitting with her Bible open. And I knew I knew her, but not really that well. I just knew who she was. 
And she looked and said, oh, Joyce, come and sit beside me. And I sat down and she folded her Bible and she put it in her bag. We got chatting. And she said to me, um, you know, what do you do with yourself at night? And uh, I said, oh, nothing much. You know, not during the week, but I usually go to the, the youth group in the church and stuff. And she said, oh, we're having a youth meeting tonight in our church. Would you like to come? And I said, whereabouts? Because, I mean, I only knew one church and that was the Church of Scotland. But anyway, she said, oh, it's the Church of the Nazarene. But she said, it's nice. There's a lot of young people. So I went in the bus with her and it was Sydney Martin who was preaching. And it was a young folk service. And he um, spoke about... Uh, about Jesus and you know what he mean what he means to each one of us that got saved and all the rest of it. And he said, if you want to know more about Jesus, put your hand up. So I put my hand up. And then kind of that was it, you know. And then when I went down into the, the kitchen with the young ones after it, they were making toast and they were chatting and everything. And I thought, they're different to these people that in, in my youth group. They're really different, and I want to be with these people. However, she asked me back on the Sunday night, and I went on the Sunday night, and um, uh, again, you know, we were sitting upstairs with all the young people, and Sidney Martin was preaching. He was the pastor there. And he said, if you want to know Jesus, this person I'm talking about, put your hand up. Well, I did it again. <laughs> And he said, well, those who have put their hand up, just come down to the front. And I can't remember how I got to the front because I was upstairs and it was a strange church. But I presume Anne must have come down with me. And um, and I got it explained to me there. And, and so that was really when I, I felt I got saved, you know, um, because there wasn't much explanation the first time. But anyway, I mean, it was only, you know, weeks after it that, um, that I definitely got saved. And, and yes, I, I, you know, I noticed a change in my life. Yeah. What, uh, anything particular? Um... Uh, just, I don't know. I was just aware there was something different about me. And I used to work, I worked in a, at the reception of a big warehouse in Glasgow, and I said to this girl who was Plymouth Brethren, who worked beside me, I said, Gina, I got saved last night. And she went, shh, shh, don't talk about it. And I said, why not? I said, I'm, you know, I'm really pleased and I feel, I feel different. And, you know, she said, yeah, but that's a private thing. You don't, you don't speak about it. But then I couldn't shut my mouth. <laughs> I just told everybody. Um, yeah. The thing that was different, I suppose, was going out on a Sunday night, although the youth group used to have something on a Sunday night, but the church in Nazarene was different. Mm -hmm. You know, it was um, really good teaching, and, uh, mm -hmm. and I felt different there. I felt that I was with people the same as myself, you know. And did the other folk notice the difference? Did say your your parents? Did they make any comment or uh, you know friends that you knew from the Church of Scotland? Well, yes, because um, I still went to uh, the Christian Endeavour, and um, that was on a, a Tuesday night, I think. And each group that was in the church was taking the service on a Sunday. And we were taking the service on, a, on the Sunday <clears throat> and I was giving my testimony. And uh, I remember, you know, I used to sing in these days and I, I sang what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. And, and then I had, you know, told them what happened to me, how I got saved and stuff. And when I came out of the service, there was two girls there, one Winnie, who I'm still in touch with, and the other one, Irene, said, see, see that man you're talking about? Um, going to tell us more, and this was Jesus. And I told them, 
and um, and they came to the, the Christian endeavor and they got saved and uh, and and yeah they, they got saved so it must have been a change in me you know and so that was a few years ago um, and uh, but in the time since then it's difficult to maybe put into uh, uh, a short space of time what Jesus means to you and how he has led you over these uh, years but uh, maybe just give us uh, an idea of yeah uh, yeah well the journey. yes I got um I got married at 18 and moved down to England moved away from all my friends and everything that was uh, that meant a lot to me and I didn't know any Christians and so I went to the Church of England um, one Sunday morning and I didn't know it then, but I got the first taste of what it was to be baptised in the Holy Spirit. One of the, the, the young vicars, he got up at one point and was telling us about um, what uh, he had experienced and he showed us a video of um, these people with their hands up, their eyes closed, and I didn't know it then, but they were singing in tongues. And I thought he was had been in Africa or something, and because these people weren't singing in English. And he said, you know, if you want to know more about this, then stay behind. But we stayed with Barry's mother at the time, and she was getting the dinner ready, you know. Um, the Sunday dinner was 12 o'clock, and don't be late for it, you know. Uh, and so I didn't, I didn't pursue that. But yes, I fell away from the Lord and uh, got, you know, I, I worked in a place where they all went out for a drink and everything. And I got into drink and swear. And really, I mean, I'm, I, when I think about it, you know, um, I really wasn't. Nobody would have even said to me, "Are you a Christian?" Because my lifestyle just did not mirror what a Christian should be like. But then in 1981, um, one of my neighbours said, Joyce, do you want to go to church with me? Uh, we had, Barry and I had moved out to Livingston by this time. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll go to church with you. And I went to the church and, you know, even at that point, I knew there was something missing in the church. They didn't preach salvation or anything. And we had got a wee, just a wee notice put through the door a couple of weeks before from the Deadridge Baptist Church saying that they were starting up a new congregation in the Catholic primary school just along the road. And I thought, I'm going to try that. And... Um, I said to him, Barry thought it was strange, you know, me going to church twice. So anyway, I said, I'm going to go along the road. There's a, wee, a new church opened up. How on you go? So I went and um, I knew it was different. You know, it was Alistair Brown and he was preaching the word of God and including everybody. And it was families. It wasn't just women. It was, you know, couples with their children and it just felt so, so different, so, so different. And then um, I went to look after uh, a lady in Edinburgh who, it, I won't go into the details, but I went to look after her while her daughter and the, uh, the daughter's sons were away on holiday because they lived with old Mrs. Perry. And um, Matthew, was there, one of the sons, he'd just come back from France from a mission. And he was down in the garden doing some gardening. They, they were in a big flat in Murrayfield. And I was looking down, I thought, there's something different about that young guy. So when he came up, I said to him, Matthew, there's something different about you. He says, oh, is it my tan? I said, no, because he'd just come back from France. I said, no, it's not that. I said, there's just something different about you. And he said, oh, I don't know, he says, Maybe it's because I'm a Christian. I said, right, sit right down. And, and he sat down and I told him I had backslidden and all the rest of it. And, and he said, right, he says, well, we'll get back to that later. And then he took me to, um, to a church on, uh, on the Wednesday night. 
And Robin, my youngest boy, was only 11 then, but he came with us and the neighbour downstairs looked after Mrs Perry. And these people, again, they were from the Edinburgh City Fellowship and they were, um, they were really worshipping the Lord. They knew him. They knew who they were speaking to. They were in tune with him. And I thought, oh, I want to be like these people. I just want to be like that. So when we came back home, well, first of all, Matthew said, it's not your usual Church of Scotland, Joyce, is it? I said, no. I said, but you know, Matthew, I enjoyed it. And I really want to be like these people. He said, you do? I said, yes. So when we got home, he said to me, now, Joyce, when we all go to bed, you get down on your knees and just ask the Lord into your life. And that's what I did. Amen. Yes. Just a, sim a simple prayer. Yes, um, yes. A simple prayer. prayer. Yeah, told him I was sorry and all the rest of it. But, you know, before that, in 1970, that was 1981, August. Before that, in, um, in June 74, uh, I had been out on a drinking binge and I had gone to visit my mother, who was dying of cancer. And at that point, she was in Falkirk Royal Infirmary. And... Um, I was just sitting there and I felt really awful because I had this hangover. And I was sitting, taking her hand, and I heard this audible voice saying, if I came now, you wouldn't even know me. And I turned around and I looked to see who was at the back of me, and it was God speaking to me. But I didn't come back to him then in 74, but nor did I ever drink again or I just didn't even touch alcohol at all. So in the last, uh, so in the last um, 40 years, uh, 1981 is 40 years ago. Yeah. Um, what does Jesus mean to you now? And uh, how has he led you in these? Well, I mean, it's just my life. Yeah, it's just my life. Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, and, and people knew then that I had changed. You know, mm -hmm. when I start off, I got baptised right away. Well, that was uh, August. I got baptised 29th of November, 81. And that was and in Deadridge, Deadridge was, Baptist Church? Well, it was in Ladywell Baptist Church because, but Alistair Brown baptised me because they were still, Deadridge was still meeting in the primary school. Yeah. And then you, a few years later, you ended up in Elam. Yeah, um, again, uh, I saw after the things of the Spirit, and it wasn't acceptable. Uh, although I must say, Alistair Brown, one night, this was really strange, Barry was night shift and he went away to work. I used to get and sit on top of my bed and got all my Bible and my notebook, book and everything. And I was praising the Lord and I got out my, my um, we, you know, Church of Scotland hymn book and I was reading through all the, the, um, the hymns and everything and praising the Lord. And I thought, do you know, I'm running out of words here. I just, I feel, I think I'm losing it. That's exactly what I thought. I thought, I think I'm losing it here because I'm, I'm running out of words. Well, the next time I saw Alistair Brown, I told him this and he said, Joyce, I'm going to tell you something. You need to ask for the gift of tongues. And I went, what? Well, he explained it to me what it was. And not there and then, because I really had to research this and find out what this was. But once I knew what it was, and, um, yeah, I sought after it. And, yeah, I never ran out of words again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that's, that's really good. That's a good. Uh, any key Bible verses or? Uh, yes. Um, yeah. Psalm, Psalm 139. You know, when, when I was a new Christian and I was reading the Bible, I was discovering verses. It was almost like, wow, look at this. And, and this was um, a wow. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You know my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. 
before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. And this was the bit that really got me. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. And then, the, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And what really struck me was he knows everything about me and he still loves me. Amen. That's, uh, that's wonderful. Yes. Any challenge uh, about following Jesus, if anyone was to ask you about it, uh, or any encouragement? It's not a challenge. Um, you, you mean what I would say to other people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, it's it just changes your life. You just have a new outlook on life. Um, I mean, my, my family noticed in 1981, um, and uh, I just, I just, maybe this is going to be too long. I'll just go back to this one wee bit. After I had, you know, recommitted my life to the Lord, um, Barry was taking myself and our two youngest boys down to Eyemouth, because that's where we always used to go, to Eyemouth. And I had my wee New Testament with me, and I put it, uh, I was taking the boys down to the swimming, but I said, right, you go down to the swimming, I'll be with you in a minute. And I, I turned up my wee New Testament and put it right at the window of the caravan, because I thought, if somebody sees this, they'll, you know, they'll come and, and speak to me because I was going to be away from everybody for a whole week. And I thought, you know, wonder if I'll survive. Anyway, um, but when I went down, uh, the boys said, oh, the swimming is closed. You know, they were going to swim and the swimming is closed. I said, we'll just have a walk through the town. Now, we had been going to Eyemouth since, since Robin was about, I don't know, about two. And he was 11 at this point. And I saw this chemist window. I had prayed, you know, Lord, I really need to meet somebody. And I saw in this chemist window free gospel records. And I thought, oh, my. So I went in and um, Eric, who owned it, the, the chemist, came out and he said, oh, hello there, are you interested? I said, yes, I am. He said, are you a Christian? I said, yeah, just brand new, <laughs> like yeah. this. And he said, right, well, he said, congratulations, you'll, not, you'll never, ever be sorry you've done it. So I told him what I had asked the Lord about, and I said, I really don't want to be here for a whole week without any Christian company. He said, I'll send my wife round to speak to you. He said, and they were just about, the, you know, our age, and they had three boys, and of course, I got back home and Isabel arrived at the door, the caravan. So she came in and she said, what about coming up for your tea? And your boys can meet our boys and they can have a time together. The whole week, there was a gospel outreach. Well, the whole week, I just got involved in Christian things. And, you know, that was kind of like my first experience of God answering prayer like that, you know, Unusual prayers, like, Lord, just please send somebody to me that, you know, can help me with this. Well, and he's never stopped answering prayers then. Eh? Amen. That's really good. Really encouraging. It's really uh, a good testimony and uh, of God's grace, because obviously there were, it's not been, it wasn't just a straightforward going up, but there was ups and downs. And uh, where God is faithful, you know, was... Uh, who you are and he loves you and uh, we still see you know we see his uh, presence working through you still Joyce and uh, it's, yes. uh, it's brilliant so uh, you know I, I, just this wee thing um, Vicky who used to be in the church Fiona's mum you know she died and um, she and I were going to write a book and we were going to call it An Ordinary Housewife with an Extraordinary God Amen.